Hi, I'm David Dodge. Welcome to Green Energy Futures. We hear a lot about the promise of geothermal energy, but of all the different kinds, what works and what has the potential to change the world? Geothermal heat has been in use since the Stone Age for bathing in hot springs, and in 1911, an Italian built a small power plant that used high temperatures to produce electricity. Bryant Jones of Geothermal Rising, an industry group in the U.S., categorizes geothermal in three ways. Generally, we think of geothermal, there's three different um, technology buckets or applications, if you will. There's the uh, use of the the heat for what we call geothermal or ground source heat pumps. So geothermal heat pumps, and that's using the the shallow heat of the earth, which is anywhere you are, if it's about 55 degrees Fahrenheit, um, and you're using that to heat and cool a building, whether that's a house or a commercial building. Indeed, this is what most people think of as geothermal. It's a proven technology, and there are hundreds of thousands of systems installed all over North America. Ground source heat pumps upgrade heat from shallow loops in the earth that are about 4 to 12 degrees Celsius to about 50 degrees Celsius in order to heat homes and buildings. This is properly called geo-exchange. The second bucket is direct use applications of geothermal. So that's where you might be using geothermal resources for um, industrial purposes, greenhouses, to brew beer, uh, to heat homes like uh, there's a but on, on more of on a network scale. So thermal energy networks fall into this bucket. Um, direct use applications you see a lot of that on university campuses around the U.S. The difference here is you are accessing much hotter water underground to feed into district heating systems. But geothermal is not a new technology. It's been around for 150 years. We've been generating electricity in Italy since 1904 and in the U.S. since 1954. And the first district heating system of a geothermal system was in Boise, Idaho in 1892. So it's just been overlooked by um, more by technologies that have brought quicker returns on your investment, such as oil and gas. But I think that's changing. And then the third bucket of of geothermal is uh, power generation. And there's many different types of ways to generate electricity from geothermal resources. This is what is referred to as geothermal energy, where you find high temperature reservoirs beneath the earth and use it to spin a turbine and generate electricity. The easiest and most common of these are sourced from known geysers or hot springs where the high temperatures are easy to access. For example, in Northern California is the largest geothermal power plant in the world, and that site Um, produces around 750 megawatts of electricity up in Santa Rosa County in Northern California. In our blog, we detail the other ways of harvesting geothermal energy, which are generally more challenging because they require prospecting for and finding a good thermal resource deep beneath the earth. Both geothermal energy and geo-exchange heating systems offer amazing alternative solutions to decarbonize energy, but geothermal energy has been slow to catch on. Big changes may be on the way. As for geothermal energy, Evor, a Calgary company we profiled already, is pioneering a new, very predictable form of closed-loop system that can reliably produce electricity and heat almost anywhere. Uh, Geothermal is having a bit of a renaissance right now. There's been a lot of deal making in the last six years. And so there's a lot of um, district heating networks that are coal fired fed currently in Europe. And they're shutting down all the coal because of the climate strategy and because of the energy security crisis. You know, they're in dire need of heat and they see geothermal as a key part of the solution. So it is, there's a very strong push or maybe that's a pull for geothermal energy, in particular, next generation geothermal energy like the Everloop, because we can put it where it's required. Ever's geothermal plant will provide enough heat for 120,000 homes and enough electricity for 8,000 homes in Germany. As for geo-exchange, single-family home systems are expensive, but a system designed to heat a 175-unit Salvation Army supportive housing complex in Edmonton will save $6 million in heating costs over the life of the system.
Scale makes a big difference. GeoExchange works very well for medium-sized buildings and in district energy systems. When it comes to single-family homes, it's new affordable air source heat pumps that work down to minus 35 degrees Celsius that are taking the market by storm. More than 400,000 air source heat pumps were installed in the Nordic countries of Sweden, Norway, and Denmark in 2022 alone. If you're curious about geothermal energy, geoexchange, or heat pumps, check out our blog at greenenergyfutures.ca. We have a complete guide. For Green Energy Futures, I'm David Dodge.